Hey everyone, my name is Nathan. Welcome to Hale. In the month of September, I read one and a half books on Marilyn Monroe's life, as well as watched 10 movies, nine of which were first time watches of hers. Not only was it great learning about her life and the struggles that she went through to get a better idea of who she was, but it was also a blast seeing her in so many different kinds of roles. I'm excited to share with you my top 10 favorite Marilyn Monroe movies. <music> Monkey Business is a very zany movie. I was intrigued to watch it because obviously Marilyn Monroe was in it, but an additional treat, it also has Cary Grant and Ginger Rogers, two actors of that old Hollywood age that I really enjoy. And Marilyn Monroe wasn't in a lot, but she still had enough screen presence to make her mark, you know? She plays this office assistant in this movie, and the most comedic thing about her role in this film is how scared she is of Ginger Rogers' character. But the movie really does revolve around Cary Grant and Ginger Rogers, dealing with an experiment that's originally tested on monkeys, but they accidentally take the experiment, the potion or whatever you wanna call it, and they both go loopy and crazy. And so the movie is what happens to them and what situations they find themselves in. Marilyn Monroe is more so thrown into it and she kind of gets to deal with both of them when they're under the influence of this experiment. I'm not the biggest fan of screwball comedies, which is probably why this one ranks so low, but I still appreciated Marilyn Monroe's character and the movie was fun enough. <laughs> The Seven Year Itch is one of her most iconic roles simply because of that memorable shot of the subway passing by and the air blowing up her dress and everything. With that being said though, that movie scene is very anticlimactic. It's not anything that the images show. In fact, the images come from something that happened on the night of shooting, but not from the movie itself, if you were wondering. I like this movie because it's a Billy Wilder trip and he always writes amazing scripts and is a really good director. But I didn't so much love the plot of it. Um, the whole idea is that after a man has been married for seven years, he starts getting that midlife crisis of sorts where he wants to start kind of being adventurous again and seeing other women and everything and don't love that plot necessarily. But if I look at it as just a joke and a fun time, then it really is pretty comedic. Marilyn Monroe, this is where she shines as the dumb blonde who's just really trying to be sexual and pretty. I think she does a great job at it. She's very good at playing kind of just the airhead and just someone who wants the attention. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not a critique of her because she really does do a great job in this role. There are plenty of funny moments, but I think my favorite moment of the movie is when the script is meta enough to compare this character that Marilyn Monroe is playing to Marilyn Monroe. It's genius. My favorite part of How to Marry a Millionaire was Marilyn Monroe's story. She plays this blonde who's very insecure of wearing glasses because men don't like women who wear glasses according to her thought process. And so it's very funny to see her wear the glasses and anytime a guy walks in, she quickly throws them off, which leads to some obviously funny consequences of her bumping into walls or following the wrong person or talking to the wrong person, confusing people with each other. It's just very funny. The two other stories that we follow are fine, but I won't lie, I liked it most when I was watching Marilyn Monroe on the screen and her story progress. <laughs> Niagara actually feels a lot like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It had my attention for the first two thirds or so, I would say, but then it makes a decision that I wasn't a big fan of, and everything after that just really lost my attention. Which is really too bad because the direction it was going in, like I said, it felt like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. There were moments of suspense. There were really cool camera angles as well. Just a really good way of presenting a story. I don't want to spoil it here, but they just made a decision. If you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about because it's a pretty big monumental moment of the movie. Everything after that, just I didn't care for. But Marilyn Monroe is absolutely stunning in this film. There's a scene in particular where she's singing a song and I just, my eyes were glued to the TV because she just demands that camera and she's so good at what she does. I will say though, there's an actor in this movie, Max Showalter. He was so over the top in his acting. He actually kind of reminded me of Mark Hamill in the original Star Wars trilogy. It just, he was the kind of person that like, if he disagreed with something, Thing, he would instantly be like, oh, honey, you got to think again. Like, don't do it like that. Or say, was that person there before? He just is like so over the top and gives that really 
dramatic 60s performance where it was just very annoying anytime he was on screen, which is too bad because he's in a Twilight Zone episode that I love and I think he does a great job there, but this role, not a good job. I've seen Some Like It Hot three times, and so I think it's pretty fair for me to say that I do have some critiques about it. It's not a perfect movie, but there are still many things that I do really like about it. Like for an example, Marilyn Monroe is probably my favorite thing about this movie. I would probably go as far to say that if I were ranking this list based on Marilyn Monroe performances and just overall presence, this probably would be number one or at least in the top three. But ranking it as a movie overall, it does make it on the lower half of the list only because there are some problems I have with the movie. I've never loved Jack Lemmon's acting. I think he is way too over the top. I appreciate some over the top because, I mean, it, it's a good contrast to Tony Curtis, but he's just too much where every time I've seen it, it has annoyed me. And I try to be patient. I try to, you know, lay back and be like, okay, you know, over the top is good, but I just cannot accept it. It's way too much for me. I also think the movie maybe might be a little bit too long. Just shed maybe 10 or 15 minutes and we would be good. But with that being said, it is a hilariously written script. Like I said, Billy Wilder is amazing at what he does. I'm convinced he is the greatest script writer of all time, and I stand by that. So it does hurt to rank it so low, but I've got to be honest. The deedly 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 dum. Boop boop doop. This was really the first movie, I would say, that made me realize, wow, Marilyn Monroe really can act. I loved seeing her performance in Don't Bother to Knock, how serious it was. She is the complete opposite of just playing the dumb blonde that's trying to flirt with all the guys. She gives a powerful performance, one that is very dramatic, and one that actually reminded me of her life in real life. Because I read a book about her, I learned a lot about what her life was like leading up to stardom and even during being a star. And the way this movie plays out, it just felt very similar to how she was raised and her past and everything and the demons that she dealt with in real life. And for that, I think I liked the movie a little bit more. I don't know if that was what attracted her to this role or what, but regardless, I thought she did a great job and it was very fitting for her. Now, unfortunately, she does not play a big role in the Asphalt Jungle. This was very early on in her career, and you can tell that she isn't quite yet used to having this screen presence that she has later on in her career. So really, all the thoughts I have about Asphalt Jungle have nothing to do with her, but with the movie itself, because I really, really liked this movie. Heist movies are always a fun time, but I think heist gone wrong movies are arguably even better, because you see the consequences of the actions that didn't go the way they were planned and it's so entertaining. A lot of times in these kinds of movies, the asphalt jungle and the killing, and I'm sure there are so many other ones, but those are the ones that come to my mind. What's most entertaining is the suspense that comes from after the heist. Like normally in heist movies, the meat of the movie is the heist itself and then they're successful in it. But in movies like this, the asphalt jungle, the heist only lasts for like five, 10, 15 minutes, maybe. And everything after that, it's just consequences of the heist. I really like the direction that the Asphalt Jungle went in and I could see this ranking higher on my list with future rewatches. <laughs> Now, I feel a little bad about this ranking being so high because Marilyn Monroe is on the screen for maybe two minutes, but it is neat because she actually shares a scene with Charles Lawton, one of my favorite actors of all time. Oh Henry's Full House is an anthology film with several different segments and Marilyn Monroe lands in the first one. It's about Charles Lawton who is a bum on the street and he's trying to get arrested so that he'll be put in jail and he can be inside in the warmth away from the cold weather. There's one part of the segment where he runs into Marilyn Monroe's character and calls her a lady. And she takes that as a big compliment because she's more of a woman of the street, if you catch my drift. And so to be called a lady means a lot to her. And that's seriously the only scene that she is in. So it feels unfair to even include this in the ranking, but I do really like this movie. And for what it's worth, if there's anything you take from this list, it's hopefully some recommendations. Hopefully you get a chance to watch this movie. And yes, you'll only see Marilyn Monroe for like two minutes, but the segments all together are really good and I highly recommend the movie. 
All About Eve is another one of those movies that she has a very small role in, but the movie is just absolutely fantastic. When I saw it the first time, I didn't love it. It was actually on a rewatch that I realized how fantastic it was. Now, the only problem I will say with All About Eve is I watched it recently and it's already kind of leaving my memory. I think that says that it's maybe not the most memorable movie, but I think All About Eve is easy to get mixed up with other films. Like I can't even remember too many scenes from this movie, even though I just watched it maybe a year or two ago. Maybe when I rewatch watch it and I watch this video a few years from now, I'll be yelling at myself saying, Nathan, no, you like All About Eve more than your number one pick. But for right now, I'm putting it at number two just because it isn't as memorable, but I do remember loving this movie. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes takes that number one spot because it's the perfect combination of a movie I really enjoy and just seeing Marilyn Monroe in an amazing role. A lot of people only like this movie for the iconic scene of her singing Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. And I mean, I'll give it to you. That is an incredible scene and probably is the best scene of the movie, but there's so much more beyond that that I really, really like about this movie. Watching these older movies, it's hard for me to get into the music a lot of the times, unless it's something iconic like Singing in the Rain or Sound of Music. But to watch a movie for the first time and to not know any songs other than Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, I actually really liked a lot of these songs and I added them to a playlist of mine. And so it wasn't just a forgettable musical from the 50s. On top of that, the movie is really funny as well. One scene in particular involves Marilyn Monroe stuck in a window. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, but that scene was hilarious. My only gripe with the movie is there's a scene towards the end with Jane Russell where she's imitating Marilyn Monroe's character, and I think she does a really good job at imitating her, but then she just breaks out into song and she actually sings Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, and it comes out of nowhere, and to be honest, I still don't really understand why why she broke out into song. Like I know it's a musical and everything, but it normally with musicals, when they break out into dance and song, it makes sense for the scene. This one, it just didn't make sense to me and it felt very awkward and forced almost. I didn't love it. And that's like my only gripe about the movie. Other than that though, Marilyn Monroe shines in this movie. She is amazing. And I definitely have replayed Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend several times. Thank you everyone for watching this video of my top 10 favorite Marilyn Monroe movies. I would love to hear what your favorite movies are in the comments below. Also, if there are any that you would recommend I watch, let me know. There are five that didn't make this list and so there's a chance that I've seen the movie but I'll just let you know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.